Greetings, the Astro 30 here yet again, and welcome back to AEL. Now, if you're new to this channel, please consider going down below and subscribing if you haven't done so already. Cheers. Now, in today's video, which is only going to be a short one, I'm going to be talking about a process known as reforming capacitors. Now, reforming a capacitor involves trying to restore the aluminium oxide layer, which is the dielectric, inside the capacitor because when they sit around for long periods of time either on a circuit board or on their own discharged they can start to break down as they naturally dry out over time so what reforming is is applying a DC voltage which is current limited to the capacitor to try and repair that aluminium oxide layer because that aluminium oxide layer can start to form little tiny cracks which can lead to short circuits within the capacitor. And if you would apply the full working voltage or thereabouts uh, to the capacitor without reforming it first, well, bad things can happen like magic smoke starts to happen, the capacitor starts to boil, and the worst case scenario is they go off with a bang. And these CAN capacitors, which are known as snapping capacitors, um, can actually go off with quite a loud pop. And um, they make a serious mess of the PCB by the shrapnel and all the internal juices leaking all over the PCB. It's a nasty mess to clean up. So one way of reforming capacitors is to do it with it still in the unit by using a limited current supply such as a dim bulb and a variact to slowly bring the line voltage of the unit up to full voltage rather than applying full voltage directly to the unit. And that will allow the capacitors internally to be reformed by just leaving the unit powered up on that current limit of supply uh, for, you know, half an hour, an hour, something like that. And then you can slowly bring the voltage up and see how you go. Another method is to do it manually, and that is to take the capacitor out of circuit, like it is now, and actually do it with a current limited DC supply. And that's the method I'm going to be showing in this video today. So I have a bunch of these Nichicon 6800 microfarad capacitors, 63 volt. In fact, I've got four of them. Um, and I have measured the capacitance of each of them. And they're around the 63 to 6400 microfarad range. So, yeah, the capacitance is a little bit varied. Um, that could be due to two things. One, that the ESR of the capacitor is starting to go up. Or two, which is most likely, is that the capacitance meter isn't that accurate. Which is more likely, so I'm going to set this multimeter's capacitance function to the highest setting, which is 50,000 microfarad. And just to make sure, I'm going to short the capacitor out, make sure there's no charge on it. There shouldn't be, but... Remember, capacitors can start to build up a charge by themselves because of the chemical reactions inside of the capacitor over time. So, connect the meter across the terminals and we let the meter catch up. We can see that we're looking at 6.29, 6.3, .29, 6 uh, well that's going to be millifarad I believe. So that would be equated to 6300 microfarad. So the capacitance is down a little bit and I'm not really sure what the tolerance of these capacitors is. Probably around about the 5% mark, which would be right from what I'm seeing because 5% of 6800 is 340 and we've lost about 340 to 400 microfarad as it is. So yeah, okay. But then again, remember, Capacitance meters aren't that accurate. Okay, so reforming a capacitor using a DC supply is going to be in several stages. So, you'd really want to reform the capacitor closest to its working voltage, but my power supply doesn't go that far. So, I'm going to first set my voltage to the maximum of the supply. And I'm going to set the current to not that high one milliamp okay so that's going to apply one milliamp of current uh, slowly to the capacitor 
which is going to allow it to slowly charge. So I'm going to connect my DC supply leads carefully to the capacitor. I hate these boots because they're slippery as anything. I've got some new clip leads on the way for connecting to the power supply so I don't have to deal with this stupid thing that came with the power supply. Okay, so the capacitor is connected. I'm going to turn the output on and we, we, what we will see is this will start at zero volts and then slowly start to increase as the capacitor charges. So here we go. So we're at zero volts. And it's going to take a while. And what we should see is the voltage, there it goes, it starts to climb up and it will slowly climb up to the 31 volts. Okay, we're at 12 volt volts now, and it, this is a slow process, especially at one milliamp. But at least doing it this way, we can keep an eye on the capacitor for like, you know, for any boiling noises or smoke. And there we are, we have reached the maximum of the power supply, 31.01 volts at one MA. So what I want to do now is I actually want to measure the voltage at the capacitor. So I'm going to connect my multimeter in volts mode and hopefully that will stand up. Probably won't. That's good enough. So the multimeter says we're at 30.9 volts. So the supply has dropped back down to 31. Yeah, it's close enough. So I want to see how well the capacitor is holding that charge by turning the supply off and it's slowly discharging but remember it's still connected to the power supply so there may be some bleed off components also in the power supply so yeah the capacitor seems to be holding a charge relatively well and I'll do the test again in a minute unloaded but I want to do the next part of the process and what that is is we now change the current to something higher. I'm going to go to 5 MA. Okay, and we're going to do the process again because the capacitor is at 0.1 of a volt now. And there it goes, it's starting to charge. And we're at the full voltage as the meter is confirming. So now what I want to do is I want to carefully just get my multimeter. I want to carefully <clears throat> disconnect the positive lead and I'll connect the meter back across the positive terminal and we'll just see how well it's holding a charge. As we can see it's not bleeding off as quickly as it was before because it's no longer connected to the power supply. And as we can see it is slowly discharging which is what we'd expect. Okay so I don't really need the multimeter connected to this anymore. I'll disconnect that and the next thing I want to do is not that that was a nasty discharge shit it'd be a, a, probably a good idea to discharge the capacitor properly using a bleed resistor or something so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that current again to 10 milliamps and I'm going to get it to charge again and what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it sit for five minutes and cook all right we're at the full voltage now and the current seems to have gone to zero but uh, it's maintaining 31 volts so I'm going to let that sit there now for five minutes cook at that voltage and then come back. Okay so that capacitor has been cooking for about five minutes now. Now there's no unusual smells, there's no smoke, there's no heat and most of all there is no unusual current draw. The current draw is still zero. If we were still seeing 10 MA and it was struggling to maintain the 31 volts 
that's a good indication that there's a problem with that capacitor. You would only reform a capacitor with a large capacitance value, such as above, you know, 2200 microfarad or so, and up to like, you know, 50,000 microfarad. And the reason for that is because these style of capacitors and voltage rating, depending on their capacitance as well, these capacitors can be quite expensive to replace, like, anywhere in the order of like 20 to 30 dollars depending on capacitance and voltage rating and say an amplifier that has these in it has a bank that uses like six of them well that is quite a hefty price tag to replace all six capacitors so reforming would be one thing you would try first but before reforming obviously a good practice would be to measure its ESR. If the ESR is way out of spec or its capacitance measurement is way out of spec, yeah, replace it. But any capacitor that's below 2200 microfarad, um, like, you know, 470 microfarad or something stupid like that, they're cheap enough to replace. Just replace them, don't bother reforming them. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna reconnect my multimeter carefully to the capacitor without shorting stuff because what I want to do is I want to first turn the supply off so it's going to discharge and allow the power supply to quickly discharge the capacitor which there we are there that's close enough I'm going to change my current limit to uh, I'm going to go 200 MA uh, so this is going to be a quick charge to the capacitor um, and there should be no problems here. I'm quite uh, safe in assuming that the capacitor is not shorted. And as we can see, it jumps up immediately. So there is nothing really wrong with that capacitor at the moment. So I'm going to discharge it. And then I'm going to go back and do a capacitance measurement on it and see if the capacitance has either increased or decreased or remains the same. Okay, so the capacitor has discharged enough for a safe level. So I can disconnect the supply and multimeter. I'm going to go back to capacitance. We're still at uh, 50,000 microfarads. Again, just to make sure, I'm going to short the leads of the capacitor to make sure it is discharged. I'm going to connect the multimeter back across the capacitor and now measure its capacitance. Well that's interesting. It's actually dropped the 5700 microfarads. Hmm, that's Rather interesting. So what does this mean? Well, it could mean that the ESR of this capacitor is starting to get on the high side. Although the capacitance is starting to slowly come back up. So again, it could be the multimeter itself is not accurate enough to measure the capacitance properly. Measuring capacitance with a multimeter is hit and miss at the best of times anyway. So I'm going to safely assume that this capacitor is okay to be used in a circuit such as in a DC power supply in an amplifier or whatever as the main filter. It seems to be functioning okay on the power supply. The capacitance is starting to come back up and as I say it could be most likely the meter. Uh, although I've noticed the display of this meter is starting to glitch. Like, producing weird text and blocks, blocky stuff all over the screen. So I don't know what's going on there. This is a problem with the meter, but anyway. So that's reforming capacitors. Um, is it worthwhile doing that process? Well, it can be, especially considering the expense of some of these capacitors. But it's really up to you if you choose to do it or not. That's just uh, how I do it. Um, other people may have different ideas of how to do it, but yeah, in the end, it's really up to you to decide whether you want to bother going through the process or just replace it. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to go down below, like, comment and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And as always, this is the Astro 30 saying, see ya, have a great day. Happy reforming capacitors.